in our special series, Tomorrow on Today. A once wooded area on a patch of road becomes a biohazard tent city. Oh, I could tell you they're not threatening me. But this condition cannot exist in our neighborhood. Why one local man believes the city is dragging their feet to remove it. Finally tonight, it's a tradition as storied as the Army itself. Now the Army band is changing its tune. Here's Aaron Gilchrist. The United States Army Field Band is no stranger to the world stage. The field band has been playing concerts and connecting the public to the Army for more than 75 years, honoring soldiers and veterans through music. The notable Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy has never sounded like this. Rappers Nicholas Feimster and Lamar Riddick just over a year ago answered a job posting by the Army Field Band looking to add hip-hop artists to its ranks. How does it feel to be the first? To be here and to be able to be a part of such a great organization that was forward-thinking enough to even bring on uh, rappers is, is a, it's a great blessing. I think people get caught up in the first and lose the quality, mm. so we want to be focused on making sure we're doing a good job with that title. You can talk about a multitude of different things with hip-hop music. After months of basic training, Feimster and Riddick are now full-time members of the Army and its field band, <laughs> making their debut in front of a world audience in Scotland at the Edinburgh Military Tattoo last month. When we hit that, that walkway, uh, me and him kind of just gave each other like a little... Yeah. Like that, right? and yeah. We're just like, it's showtime. That's stuff that I prayed for when I was younger, so I was glad to be there. The Army striking a new chord with these trailblazers leading the way. Sometimes things just take time, but uh, it's here now, and we're here to stay. Aaron Gilchrist, NBC News, Fort Meade, Maryland. And that's nightly news for this Monday. Thank you for watching, everyone. I'm Lester Holt. Please take care of yourself and each other. Good night. News for San Antonio at 6. We're here for you. A local neighborhood reportedly becoming a biohazard. Why one local man says they need help and how the city is responding. The U.S. House of Representatives Children's Caucus holding a hearing in Uvalde today. What all was discussed? And it's a new and improved vaccine. Why medical officials are confident in the latest round of COVID boosters and how you can get one. Well, everything from gas cans to shopping carts, even needles, one man has seen it all. This is near his east side home. Good evening and welcome to News 4 San Antonio at 6. I'm Simone D'Alba. You know, I'm Jonathan Martinez. That resident calls it a tin city and he says it's become a biohazard. As he tells News 4 San Antonio's Robin Oguinye, he believes the city is dragging its feet to remove it. You got a can of gasoline. Now they're here with a barbecue pit. Frank Salinas lives in this tight-knit neighborhood called Robards Way. Just about a 20-second drive down the road, you'll see this. You'll have haphazard individuals coming off of the highway and relieving themselves here. Frank says he's speaking on behalf of his neighbors who live on the other side of the encampment. They've heard and seen people gathering here at all hours of the night near Randolph Boulevard across from the Lowe's on I-35. One of his concerns? The fires burn here will eventually catch on to some of the brush that surrounds the area. Frank says just 90 days ago, this patch of road was all wooded area. It was excavated recently by someone who lives just up the street. But he says it's allowed people to make their way in and leave what you see over there. I could tell you they're not threatening me. But this condition cannot exist in our neighborhood. We reached out to District 10 Councilman Clayton Perry's office to see if Frank's concerns had been heard. We also reached out to Perry's neighborhood engagement director, whom Frank had been communicating with about the encampment. That director tells me he notified Health and Human Services, Code Compliance, and SAPD safe officers. From here, he says property owners will have to approve a criminal trespassing affidavit to have the property vacated. Code Compliance officers were even on scene as we talked to Frank. We asked them what was being done. Do you guys know if they're doing anything about that, that tent city back there? That's going to be for open records since you're the media and we don't speak to the media. We placed a direct call to code compliance who say they're looking into the matter. Until then, Frank yeah, says wait. he hopes nothing will go wrong. This little fire turns into a bigger fire. What are you waiting for? Take care of it now while it's little. Robin Oguinye, News 4, San Antonio.
A woman was killed overnight in a shooting near a bar on the city's east side. According to police, when they got to the scene, they found the body of Samantha Gonzalez inside of a white SUV. Witnesses telling police there was an argument between two groups at a nearby bar off of South Cavers before security asked all of them to leave. Investigators say one of the groups drove off and was followed by yet another car when someone inside opened fire, hitting the victim who died in the back seat. Police are still investigating. So far, no arrests in this case. Also developing right Right now, police are looking for the suspect who shot a man in the stomach at a northwest side apartment complex. Investigators say the man was taken to the hospital and is expected to recover. However, they also say he isn't cooperating with the police investigation. Authorities believe someone shot towards the victim's apartment from the parking lot before running off. In more news this evening, Rackspace Technology has announced the appointment of Amar Malatira as Chief Executive Officer. Malatira is a global business leader with 25 years of strategic and operational management, transformational leadership, sales, business development, and general management expertise. Malatira, who has served as Rackspace Technology's President and Chief Financial Officer since November of 2020, has assumed responsibilities effective immediately. Ubaldi families testifying today at a special meeting of the United States Children's Caucus. Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, along with Congressman Joaquin Castro, called it a listening session so they could hear directly from families how the federal government can help them recover. News for San Antonio's Matt Roy was there. He joins us live with more. Matt, good evening. Jonathan, good evening to you. This today was one of the most emotional scenes that I've seen in this town since the tragedy happened exactly four months and two days ago. Congresswoman Jackson Lee asked the families what they're feeling now and what they felt on that day. Take a listen to what they said, but I will warn you, their statements were very, very hard to listen to. One of the students was, was covered in blood. So as a med aide, I went over to help her to see if she was okay. And she explained that that she was fine. And that and she explained that they shot her best friend. And when she sat there covered in blood and said my said Amory's name. That's something that we can't describe to you. How many more damn kids need to die before the government does something? My daughter passed at 113, 117 to a gunshot wound to the chest. From there, I promised my daughter while she lay there that I was going to fight. The families explained that what they need from the government is change. They say they need an assault weapons ban or minimum age raised up to 21 years old. They also say they need some of the bureaucracy removed from the Compassion Fund, which has all the money in it that has been donated since the tragedy. They say they haven't gotten any of it yet. The frivolity of this fund is shameful. <clears throat> and minimally, the federal government can inquire about what has been provided for the families. Now, the emotion here today, as you can tell, was extremely raw, but the message from the families was exactly what it was 120 days ago. Something needs to change, is what they're saying now. Jackson Lee, I spoke to her afterwards, and she says she was completely shocked, floored even, uh, what the families had to say about the Compassion Fund, and that's where the federal government, she says, is going to step in to make sure that these families have exactly what they need so they can continue to grieve and fight the, so, to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Reporting for News 4 San Antonio, I'm Matt Roy. Melissa Vega at the live desk happening right now. We are learning tonight that a former Army sergeant from Fort Hood will be headed to prison for six years for distributing fentanyl. We are learning a judge has sentenced 25 year old Erie Bada Lopez of Phoenix, Arizona to six years in prison. And according to court documents between May of last year through July of last year, Lopez, who was then an active duty Army sergeant stationed at Fort Hood, sold more than 3,000 tablets of fentanyl. Authorities say that he sold those tablets to undercover 
officers in and around the Austin area. The special agent in charge of the DEA saying this case demonstrates the links that Mexican cartels are willing to go to to infiltrate our communities with deadly fentanyl for their own selfish gains. Simone. Melissa, thank you. The new COVID-19 booster shots are off to a slow start. In fact, less than 2% of people eligible are getting them. Medical reporter Liz Bonus takes a look at the numbers and why some may want to reconsider. Hey there, everybody. Part of the push to get these new boosters is to try to reduce the odds new variants will continue to spread. But just as the CDC reports that BA5 is on the decline, BA4.6 and one called BF7 now on the rise. BF7 said to be sort of a cousin to BA5. It's led to slightly more than 2% of confirmed cases this week. BA 4.6, now the top strain behind BA 5. It now accounts for slightly more than 1 in 10 of the new cases showing up. BA 5 has dropped from almost 9 in 10 cases this week to 8 in 10, according to the CDC. These new bivalent boosters suggested now for everyone 12 and older, if it's been at least two to four months since your last shot, Krista Heisen says this newest vaccine designed to protect against both the original strain and the Omicron BA4 and BA5 variants. Says they've tailored it to be more aggressive against Omicron. Those stepping up to get them say it's because... I want to live. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I have had a couple of people who have died and I just felt like it's my duty to do a the most I can to try to sustain my life and live as long as I can. The new boosters could be a real game changer. The CEO of Pfizer announcing today he has COVID-19 for a second time. He's had four vaccine doses of the original vaccine, but not this newest shot for protection. I think the new variants, they are highly contagious, so it's hard to avoid it. Kevin Hartnell brought his family into this clinic in Ohio's Hamilton County for boosters today. The kids say the vaccines have made getting back to school a lot easier. It's a lot easier to learn. I believe that. In school than on a computer. Now one note, with less lab testing, it's hard to track some of these newer variants, but it is at least likely that the newer shots will be protective against some of these sort of offshoots of Omicron. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. Well, skies clear for most of the area. The front is now down to the south, so it's ushering in low humidity. And where we do have a little bit of humidity is out in our western zone, where there's still a couple little showers and thunderstorms hanging on right around uh, the Rio Grande there, around Camado. You can see a little thunderstorm has been coming through. Uh, Eagle Pass, just off to your north northeast, you have a little thunderstorm here, so we'll see if that one can clip across a little further down the river into a southern Maverick County. Here you see a nice little pocket of some rainfall that'll be crossing the river here shortly and out into uh, Dimmit County. And after that. That's it. Skies will be clearing and we start to work on cooling through this evening into tonight. So it actually turns out to be really pleasant. There's no humidity of consequence really for most of the area. So that'll make it even more comfortable to you as we slide back into the low 80s into the 70s we go. Of course, we'll be talking about just how cool it gets in the nights ahead. And of course, the latest on Hurricane Ian coming up. All right. See you soon, Chris. Thank you. Up next, tragedy in Russia, where the latest school shooting has killed several children. Details on the alleged gunman and what authorities are saying about this attack. And on News 4's evening break, SAPD is asking for your help finding an at-risk teen. Details next. You're watching News 4 San Antonio. I don't know a lot about country music. Anything. <laughs> Join Team Blake. She wants to be a country singer, I can tell. Uh, mm, Awkward. <laughs> You're a time traveler. You leap into other bodies, saving people. Uh, oh. Quantum Leap, tonight on NBC. Hi, I'm Diana Rocco. Join me weekday mornings on News 4 San Antonio Today. Attorney Thomas J. Henry is recognized across the nation for taking on the tough cases and obtaining results that speak for themselves. Thomas J. Henry, the name you know, the firm you trust. With Sonic's two for five menu, you get two delicious things for only five bucks. How will you know which two to choose? Don't ask.
ask us? That's a rhetorical question. And everyone knows two for five is better than one. Which is helpful if you struggle with decision making. The Sonic two for five dollar menu. Hmm, Sonic. Gettle. G-O-E-T-T-L. When your plumbing needs attention. When your plumbing needs attention. Call Gettle. Call Gettle. We'll open that clog drain. We'll open that clog drain. For just $80. For just $80. Gettle, we do things the right way, not the easy way. These rubber rhinos aren't going to damage these shingles. But if the recent hailstorms hit your roof, you probably weren't as lucky. Call Rhino Roofers today to schedule your free inspection. Making headlines tonight, at least 15 people are dead and dozens injured after a gunman opens fire at a school in central Russia before turning the gun on himself. It happened at a school in a city about 600 miles east of Moscow. Authorities have identified the gunman as 34-year-old Artyom Kazantsev. Investigators say he graduated from the same school and was wearing a black T-shirt with Nazi symbols. He was also a registered patient at a psychiatric facility. A Kremlin spokesperson describes a shooting as a terrorist attack. Sadly, 11 children are among the dead. Hurricane Ian heading toward Florida, where residents are bracing for the growing storm. Across America, crime has exploded. Police officers killed in the line of duty. And here's Beto O'Rourke. I really love that uh, Black Lives Matters and uh, other protesters have put this front and center to defund police forces. That's right. Beto stands with groups that support defunding the police. And I know that it's an idea that is dangerous to some. No, it's dangerous to everyone. And it's why Beto O'Rourke should never be governor of Texas. At Thomas J. Henry, our results speak for themselves. Jonathan Martinez, here for you every day, only on News 4 San Antonio. Texas Tailgate Party, now at Northside Chevrolet. When the tailgates drop, it's time to shop. Step up to a new Chevy truck and get more for your trade than ever before. Plus a $1,000 accessory allowance on new 22 Silverado 1500 and 750 bonus cash. 1.9 financing on a brand new Equinox for just $239 a month. Special 3.49 interest for 60 months on new 22 Malibu and Camaro. And back to the live desk happening right now. We are following a live picture here, a first ever crash test where NASA is smashing a spacecraft into an asteroid more than 6.5 million miles away. So this spacecraft is called DART, which stands for Double Asteroid Redirection Test. Now the goal is to test whether it is possible to knock an asteroid asteroid off course oh and it is happening here wow. let's take a listen Three, two, one. Oh my gosh <gasps> oh wow awaiting visual confirmation all right we got it waiting, waiting. And we have an impact <laughs> equality for humanity in the name of planetary defense. And there you go. A lot of cheers going on there. Now, scientists were saying that this asteroid was not a danger to Earth. This was just a good practice target, an experiment here that some say could possibly one day save the world. Just history in the making right there. That is the latest from the live dust. Jonathan. All right, Melissa, thanks a lot for that. Florida has declared a state of emergency as it braces for Hurricane Ian. Right now, the storm quickly intensifying in the warm waters of the Gulf and is predicted to become a major hurricane by the time it makes landfall. Today, a mandatory evacuation order was ordered for parts of the Hillsborough County, which includes the Tampa Bay area. FEMA officials are warning everyone in its path they need to be on alert. If Ian does in fact hit Tampa, it would be the city's first direct hit from a hurricane since way back in 1921. 
Now your certified most accurate four zone weather with Chief Meteorologist Chris Sujan. And Chris, I know you're familiar with the Tampa area and yeah, I wanted yeah. to mention we've been talking about the storm as it's developing and one of the dangers is how slowly it could move once it approaches that Florida coastline. Well, the longer it's turning outside of Tampa Bay, the more mm -hmm. it's pushing water up into Tampa Bay right. and uh, that's what the hurricane did in 1921. It threw 11 feet of storm surge into wow. Tampa, put Tampa underwater. Mm -hmm. uh, many of the communities, uh, they're, you know, they're five, six feet above sea level wow. and so they go under water and yeah. so yeah it's a big deal there's evacuations now underway mm -hmm. uh, my parents live there I've been talking to my dad constantly every day he's one of the updates and so I know many of you uh, on Facebook tell me you have friends or family there as well we're gonna get you the latest on that hurricane in just a moment I do want to point out that Jupiter is gonna be dazzling your eye this evening and again in the morning and for the, really the next few uh, nights ahead it rises in the east it's an opposition so it's in its closest to Earth it's going to be for more than 100 years from now. It's right now going to be 367 million miles from Earth. That makes it pretty bright. And that means that the sun is behind Earth as it sets. And then, of course, it illuminates Jupiter. And then in the morning, as Jupiter sets and the sun's coming up into the east, it puts on a show in the western sky. So be looking for that. It's just a real, it looks like a bright star. And if you have binoculars or a telescope, and my goodness, you might even be able to see four of the Galilean moons on it and maybe the great red spot. You know, I mean, it's, it'll put on a show. So enjoy that. Skies will be clear. Morning rain we had through the hill country and parts of the Rio Grande uh, as you work out around Valverde County. That's all been uh, moving on. Although there's still a couple little showers and thunderstorms left behind from some of the humidity that hasn't quite exited our area just yet. But everyone's going to be getting into some really dry air. Today was very symbolic for the last opportunity to get our hands on some rain for for a long time 95 today dry heat Monday with a front came through the cooler air a little delayed in getting in which is typically the case so the humidity levels fell but the heat was on 93 still we have the the wind from the north northeast but look at that relative humidity 21 percent bone dry air moving in so there you see 80s and 90s here across our four zones but again the comfort factor right now is increasing because the humidity is dropping off which makes the heat a little bit more manageable for you especially if you work outdoors construction contractor work maybe a big projects outside of your house you need dry weather this could be a good pattern for that look at the dew points 40s into 50s so that gives us the cool nights and mornings and then we get, you know, the warm, toasty, warm, hot afternoons, but without the humidity. And, of course, that shuts off the rain chances for the rest of the week through the next weekend ahead. There's the rainfall trend. It is just not good. So that is not necessarily good news for us here. Great weather for outdoor activities, but we need water. Uh, that's our yearly total right now at the airport. Very much on pace for our top five driest years on record. So not a good pattern for that. Not with a big Canadian trough like this here dropping in cool, dry air into the eastern half of the country. That's what we're tapping into. That trough picks up Hurricane Ian, which is now south of Cuba. It'll cross western Cuba out over the Gulf tomorrow. It'll strengthen to a Cat 4 hurricane and then slam into the west side of Florida. There you see that right now the wind gusts out across the Gulf. The waves aren't really too bad, but once it gets north of Cuba, then we'll see the wave action hit our beaches, but we're not gonna have a Texas impact otherwise. And there you see the projected path into the west side here of Tampa Bay, the west central coast of Florida possibly as a two or a cat three hurricane with storm surge and gusts probably hitting 100 miles an hour a little bit higher there around tampa bay meantime 64 in the morning tomorrow enjoy the mornings ahead your commute maybe it's a you know cup of coffee on the porch to soak it in before you get into the commute look at that low to mid 60s each and every morning the afternoons they'll be warm to hot 80s and low 90s out west we get those cool crisp mornings to enjoy 80s and 90s for highs hill country very cool if not chilly in some cases in the mornings ahead and our eastern zone extended forecast also with the cool mornings now here's zach this is the thomas j henry sports desk just a little more than an hour away before the cowboys kick off against the giants for some monday night football and the return of michael gallup we'll have to wait one more week gallup was listed as questionable and went through a full week of practice as he comes back from an acl tear but he's been ruled inactive tonight instead third round pick jalen tolbert will be available for the first time the team also elevated veteran offensive lineman jason peters for tonight's game and before that quarterback dad prescott is scheduled to have his stitches taken out from his right hand 
can, and fans will be anxiously watching the progress he makes. Kickoff from the Meadowlands just before 7.30. Hey, the UTSA Roadrunners not dwelling too much on their win over Texas Southern on Saturday. They got right back to work last night to get ready to defend their Conference USA title. Coach Jeff Trailer and his players not too happy with their performance in the 52-24 win over Texas Southern. Today in his media roundtable, Coach Trailer says his team's play has been more on Brad in their two losses against Houston and Texas. The good news is the runners are getting healthier. The bad news, it's just not happening at a very fast pace. It couldn't be a worse time for us to play a Friday night game with our, the way our injury situation is right now. It's not as good as I wanted it to be. Uh, a few of those guys could not practice last night, which is unfortunate. But we've got to find a way to get back on that plane Friday night. Man, that, that Saturday off is going to feel like a bye week for us if we can just find a way to get home. And wouldn't you know, Middle Tennessee's playing better than they've ever played right now. Just, it is what it is, man. UTSA opens conference play against Middle Tennessee Friday evening. The Blue Raiders coming off a big upset win over Miami. Well, it's not the way Longhorns fans envisioned opening Big 12 play in the second year of Steve Sarkeesian's tenure as Texas head coach. An overtime loss to Texas Tech and the Horns led by double digits earlier in the ballgame again. It was a pattern last year, but Sark believes this team will break it. I think we are better. Uh, I know sometimes the results don't look that way, but I do think we're a better football team. Uh, I have a lot of confidence in the work that the players, the coaches have put into this. Um, sometimes it's easy to look at the result and think, oh, we're not better. But I see a lot of improvement on where we're at. Um, naturally, the consistency factor is critical. I feel good about where we're at as a program, uh, but we got to put it, we got to put it out there on the field every Saturday. The Longhorns back home for their second conference game, this one against the Mountaineers from West Virginia and another evening kickoff in Austin. Don't forget to vote for our Friday night fever play of the week. One of our nominees this week is Judson's Nathaniel Stanley. He had four rushing touchdowns in the first quarter for the Rockets in their game of, against Midland Legacy. He finished the night with six total to help Judson in the 60 to 50 win. Voting is live right now over at news4sa.com. You can check out all the plays there and you can vote as many times as you like. So go vote. We'll reveal the winner later this week. You know what I love is how uh, Judson's coach really builds up his team. I was on oh, their yeah. Twitter account and he goes about Stanley is who he was just saying. Total package, grades, character, toughness, football IQ, speed. He really builds them up. And you see that all across the programs here in San Antonio. Really good stuff from all the coaches and the players. So uh, it's a privilege to go out and cover them. Yeah, yeah, indeed. All right. Thanks a lot for that, Zach. Well, next, it is Christmas in September. Remember, Amazon offering customers a second round of Prime Day sales when you, you can expect prices to drop. Here for you with the cleanest restaurants in town. The Blue Plate Award, Tuesdays. Henry Cuellar boards a flight from South Texas. The altitude changes and so do Cuellar's values. In D.C., Cuellar forgets South Texas, raises your taxes, and votes for new IRS agents targeting families making 75000 or less. What kind of flight makes a man forget where he came from? Cuellar had a private plane funded by campaign dollars. Bridge for Henry Cuellar, but not for you. Congressional Leadership Fund is responsible for the content of this advertising. Chevy Silverado. It's got the power you want. And the capability you need to do the job. So you can get to the important work. Find new moments. Find new roads. Get a $500 cash allowance on all 2022 Silverado pickups with a 2.7 liter turbo engine. Plus, now during truck season, get a $1,000 accessory allowance toward a new Chevy truck with accessories. Chevy drives Texas. Find new roads. Hi, kids. It's me, Elmer. And today's show is brought to you by the letter D. And D stands for, say it with me, ducks. No, no. Ducks. Right. As in, when you let Elmer's install your new AC system, we'll clean your air ducts for free. Because you should never hook a new, powerful AC unit up to dirty, filthy ducts. As someone living with type 2 diabetes, I want to keep it real and talk about some risks. With type 2 diabetes, you have up to four times greater risk of stroke, heart attack, or death. Even at your A1C goal, you're still at risk, which if ignored, could bring you here may put you in one of those, or even worse, too much? 
That's the point. Get real about your risks and do something about it. Talk to your health care provider about ways to lower your risk of stroke, heart attack, or death. Learn more at GetRealAboutDiabetes.com. Before we begin, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Liberty Mutual. They customize your car insurance so you only pay for what you need. And by switching, you could even save $652. Thank you, Liberty Mutual. Now, contestants ready? Go! Why? Why? Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Your brain is an amazing thing, but as you get older, it naturally begins to change, causing a lack of sharpness or even trouble with recall. Thankfully, the breakthrough in Prevagen helps your brain and actually improves memory. The secret is an ingredient originally discovered in jellyfish. In clinical trials, Prevagen has been shown to improve short-term memory. Prevagen, healthier brain, better life. Well, this is cool. In more consumer news, you'll soon get a chance at a second round of Prime Day sales. Amazon announcing the Prime Early Access Sale. It's scheduled for October 11th and 12th exclusively for those with an Amazon Prime subscription. This is the first time Amazon is giving customers two Prime Day events in the same year. It will include hundreds of thousands of holiday deals. Next on News 4's Evening Break, the first January 6th hearing just a few days away. What new information is being revealed? I don't know a lot about country music. Anything. Join <laughs> Team Blake! She wants to be a country singer, I can tell. Uh, Awkward. <laughs> How did I get here? You're a time traveler. You leap into other bodies, saving people. Uh, oh. Quantum Leap, tonight on NBC. Friday only from 10 a.m. to midnight at Ashley Home Store's Midnight Madness. Buy one, get one half off. Buy this sofa, get the matching love seat half off. Or get 0% interest for five years. Friday only at Ashley Home Store. In tough times, Texans make do. But Republican Cassie Garcia would take away the benefits that hardworking Texans need. Cassie's Washington allies support a plan that would gut Medicare and Social Security. And Cassie supported a plan that would end protections for pre-existing conditions like diabetes or cancer. AARP called it an age tax. We can't let Republican Cassie Garcia take what's ours. House Majority PAC is responsible for the content of this advertising. At Thomas J. Henry, our results speak for themselves. Thomas J. Henry, the name you know, the firm you trust. Serving up signature burgers, shakes, and crinkle fries. Burger Boy, the taste you crave. Texans are fed up with violent crime and skyrocketing murder rates. To stop it, I will pass legislation next session to add a 10-year mandatory jail sentence to...